the talk today will deal with uh, the appropriate management of policy chemia veda. I am going to present uh, the European Leukemia Net uh, new recommendation, and uh, the paper was uh, just uh, published uh, in the Lancet uh, of Hematology. Current therapy in PV is driven by the cardiovascular risk. We divide patients in low risk and high risk according to age and history of thrombosis. In low risk, uh, guidelines say that you have to treat uh, with low dose aspirin and phlebotomy to keep the hematocrit less than 45%. On the contrary, in age over 60 or with a uh, history of thrombosis in uh, addition to low dose aspirin and phlebotomy to keep the hematocrit less than 45%, uh, you can add uh, hydroxyurea or PEG interferon. This is uh, the recommendation by several guidelines, including ELN and uh, and uh, NCC and American allies. Recently, we we convened uh, in uh, the group of European Leukemia Net to update the recommendation. And this was needed because a new pegylated formulation of interferon alpha 2b was. Uh, approved by FDA and EMA in Europe. The, the product is called uh, uh, Ropeg Interferon, and the commercial name is Besremi. Besremi was approved in uh, polycythemia vera without uh, any distinction. But uh, we decided uh, that uh, time has come uh, to list uh, the clinical questions uh, in where the, the use of this drug uh, can be more appropriate. And uh, the question one we decided to answer is the following. What benefits uh, should be expected from cytoreductive drugs over phlebotomy? in lower risk patients. As I said, low risk patients should be treated with phlebotomy, aspirin, and address modifiable risk factors. But guidelines at the moment do not recommend treatments with cytoreductive therapy. There are four reasons why this should be changed. First, the rates of thrombosis in low risk are higher than in non-MPN population. We calculated two, threefold higher in low risk patients. The second is that phlebotomy alone is not adequate to steadily keep the hematocrit on target in real world clinical practice. The third question is in PV, the question is not only in the hematocrit, but uh, regards also to leukocytosis, thrombocytosis, and especially extreme thrombocytosis uh, control. And uh, the, the fourth question that uh, in favor of treatment uh, with the cytoreductive therapies in low risk patients is that if you treat your patients with phlebotomy alone, you can enhance uh, some symptomatology of these patients because uh, you eliminate uh, very much uh, the ion, the ion patrimony in uh, your patients. Ion goes down, ferritin goes down, so that uh, the symptoms can increase uh, in your patients. So there is a need for cytoreduction therapy, at least in some subgroups of patients. But 
which patients may benefit then? We say some subgroups, not all patients can benefit. For instance, poor tolerance to phlebotomy. Too many phlebotomies a year. We calculate it at least four, six phlebotomy a year. Cytoreductive should be considered also in patients reporting progressive leukocytosis or thrombocytosis. And in these cases, which cytoreductive drug should be preferred? You cannot use in a younger paper patient's hydroxyurea because you can enhance the risk of uh, acute leukemia that is intrinsic in patients uh, with uh, this disease. 25% of acute leukemia are seen in untreated patients. So you enhance, you can enhance this risk. Is not proven, I have to say, but uh, there is a suspicion, there is a concern that hydroxyurea, so that uh, the community say a younger patient, 40 years old patients, don't use uh, hydroxyurea if you want uh, to use uh, a cytoreductive drug. Interferon can be an option on the basis of this trial. We published uh, uh, very recently, uh, Ropeg versus uh, phlebotomy, and we demonstrated uh, that uh, Lopeg is able to uh, keep the hematocrite uh, in uh, on target uh, in 84 percent of patients as compared uh, with 50 percent of patients uh, with a phlebotomy alone and in high risk patients uh, you can use hydroxyurea but also interferon uh, this uh, the interferon use is um, supported by this clinical trial. And in this clinical trial that uh, was used for registration of this, uh, of this drug, uh, indicates after five years that you have not only a complete hematological response, but you can document also a reduction of a JAK2 allele burden, so that in some cases you can modify the natural history of uh, this disease. The, the second line therapy, we, we, uh, we tackle also this problem, also because we have uh, data for patients uh, treated uh, with uh, rusolitinib when a patient is resistant to the first line therapy. And this is based on the response clinical trial. Primary response was a primary composite endpoint that you can reach this in 20% of patients. And in 40% of patients, you can reduce the splenic volume and in 60% of this patient resistant to hydroxyurea, you can keep the hematocrit on target, 60% of patients. Competitor to ruxolitinib today is a pegylated interferon on the basis of some trials done in the States, in the United States, to which we participated, so that at the end, a recommendation for the second line therapy in polycythemia vera should be discussed with the patient. And if you are dealing with a younger patient, the panel of this guideline recommend to use uh, hydroxy, uh, not uh, hydroxyurea, because these are resistant uh, patients, but uh, you have to use uh, uh, interferon, pegidases interferon. We use uh, ROPEC interferon, that is uh, the only interferon approved today. So these are the summary 
of uh, the guidelines uh, by European Leukemia Net. I would like uh, to acknowledge uh, the role of many uh, authors of these guidelines that comes from several parts of Europe and also from the United States. Thank you very much for listening to me.